Hello everyone, this is B-Belt Dan and welcome back to Constructing the Enterprise J in Blender. Sorry that it has been uh, you know, a week late on some of these episodes. Uh, you know, I didn't I know I didn't release anything last week and I know, you know, I've been kind of releasing on Tuesdays the couple of weeks before that, but you know, here this one's probably going to be released here on Thursday. So, uh, I just have to apologize. Um, you know, uh, just a little bit of kind of a backstory is that I'm actually down here in the south in Texas and recently we got hit with some major storms and that caused some flooding and, and all that kind of you know nice little stuff that goes on with the storms I say nice I mean it really wasn't nice but you know we I had that to deal with and it wasn't so much that knock on wood you know, I personally didn't really get affected with the floodwaters or anything, but um, I have luckily have had no damage, but my main job kind of uh, kept me pretty busy, and we'll probably go a little bit into that a little bit later. But right now, we're going to go ahead and start working on the Enterprise J with the textures. Uh, just a real quick little uh, brief summary to catch all up if y'all are just tuning in is that after working on this for for quite some time i mean going on you know 30 episodes now i've decided that i'm going to go ahead and kind of call it not necessarily quits but i'm just going to just kind of say that i'm uh, happy with the way that the ship looks now and i'm going to go ahead and start texturing it and then release it out as a low poly version of the ship because i can always go back later you know much much later and you know redo the ship completely from scratch after you know looking at it a little bit you know longer and maybe even getting a couple of opinions and something like that or you know even while I'm doing the textures I might probably come up with ideas to where you know maybe that should be modeled as opposed to texture or what have you but I'm just going to go ahead and go straight to texturing so that's pretty much what this episode is going to be but I'm going to start off with uh, texturing what I call the glowy bits yeah I think that's more of the technical term for it isn't it glowy bits these are the bits of the inner of the ship that is going to glow and emit light primarily what i'm going to be doing is this back uh the impulse engines these little details or at least these three here on each side i'm going to do something different with this i and the deflector dish i don't quite know i need to do some of that i don't quite know if i want to get to the buzzard 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 you know whatever they whatever they're called you know collectors today in fact i'm looking at i think i might need to probably go back and yeah i need to go back and do some modification on those because yeah that doesn't look right so okay so i mean i'm not done completely modeling but yeah i need to go back and fix that but we're going to try starting with that no and i might also probably do this impulse crystal uh deflector well for the price so oh, Googly boogly. I can't remember what it's called now, but let's go ahead and get that started. So first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take this panel here and I'm going to go into, it is UV image editor. And I'm going to go ahead and select this and go into edit mode. Now, what I'm going to need to do here to build the UV texture is I'm Let's see, uh, if I go ahead, no, I could do that when I do saving, is I'm going to go ahead and start selecting some edge loops to start kind of cutting some of this out. Now, there is a little bit of modeling, once again, just like with the with the Buzar collectors that I'm going to be, need to go back and do that I'm going to need to clean up with, as you can see here, it's more prominent when you go into edit mode. This is a little bit rounded, and I don't want that. I want it to be squared off. I could do that, but... As long as I don't change the mesh drastically, I could still go ahead and texture areas like this right here because that's pretty much square and it's not going to affect a whole lot. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to start selecting an edge loop mode and I like to kind of go into edge loop and you can just press control and I want to select the boundary of this like right there. 
So that selects the boundary. And then what I want to do is do control E. And what I wanted it to do is mark a seam. So what that does is that creates a seam here. It's demonstrated by a red line. And what that can do is if I go ahead and I do a, let's say like a control select a vertice and I do select, I can go ahead and select all link or do a control L. And what that does is that, that it's still a part of the mesh. Because see if I grab it and move it around, I mean it's still you know, as you can see, I mean, it's still connected to the mesh, but it separates it from the rest of the mesh, kind of virtually, so to say. So if I go ahead and do that, what I'm going to go ahead and do is, now there's several different ways that you can texture, and we'll go more, or UV unwrap, and I'm going to go more into detail with that uh, when I start texturing or the rest of the ship but for this I'm just going to go ahead and keep it simple let's go ahead and do that just kind of keep it simple is I'm going to UV unwrap this from perspective so you just go into uh, U and I'm going to go into unwrap but I'm going to project from view now what I need to do here though is oop, I forgot one little detail I need to go ahead and actually add in a texture into this because we got a material it's deflector blue but we don't have a texture added to it that's why I don't see anything onto this so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to add in a brand new texture or material color and click on new so it's a new material I'm going to call this one glowy bits I probably come up with a better name for that but this is going to have all the individual glowy bits on it so and I'm going to go ahead and leave all of this alone for right now and you'll see why a little bit later so then I'm going to go into texture and I'm going to go ahead and add a brand new texture and then from here go ahead and call it glowy bits as well now if I go into here I should be able to yes no maybe uh, let's see okay hold up for just one second all right I'm back sorry about that I kind of had a little bit of a brain fart there but yeah so I was right what we needed to go ahead and do is go in and create a texture layer for this material and then we need to go in and add in a new image if you already have an image already set you could do that I've already got one here once again I called glowy bits so if I open that up and here you can go ahead and tell it to be whatever dimensions that you want uh, now I do know for me that textures can really be whatever size that you want, but I've kind of come from the old school way of texturing, you know, uh, you know, modding games and stuff to where the textures you almost always for video games had to be, you know, either, you know, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 1024, or 2048 it always had to be something along those lines you know you couldn't have anything within the video games to be outside of those dimensions they had to be square they had to be multiples of you know of 16 divided by times 2 or times 2 times 2 so 16 times 2 32 so on so on and so forth uh, for right now I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 1024 because I don't think I'm gonna have that much Oh, I don't think these are going to really need um, a tremendous amount of texture, especially for these bits. Now, maybe for the entire ship, it's going to need big textures, but for these, I don't think it's going to need them. So, we're going to go ahead and do that, and then once we create this new texture here, we could go into here and select it. Now, it's black. You know, uh, that's because there's nothing there, but you can go ahead and go into a UV grid or into a color grid. And what that does is if I go ahead and go back here to control L that and tell it, you know, I want it to be one of these grids. Now we've got to go back and select that. If I go into a texture mode, 
as you can see, we have the color grid, the UV grid, so on and so forth, which this really comes into play to try to help you UV unwrap the rest of the ship, you know, which we'll go back into that a little bit later. But this is right here. This is pretty much just straightforward. So we're going to go into a blank. And as you can see, well, oh, let's go back into a back mode and I'm going to press U again and I want to project from view. So that's what we got right here. Now it's only half of it because this ship only has, still has the mirror modifier applied to it. And for the most part, I am going to keep that mirror modif modifier on it for right now. So we need to kind of keep that in mind when we go into Photoshop, which we'll do that here. So we got this. Uh, so I'm going to go into back. And from here, let's move this up. And I'm going to move this up to the top. And I think that's going to be big enough. I mean, I'm leaving enough space to where if we double this, you know, the engine is going to be there. We can have the deflector dish down here, the impulse crystal deflector here, and, you know, plenty of uh, other room for other bits of stuff. So, you know, actually probably the deflector dish is going to be a little bit right there because right here we're going to try to leave space for, um, you know, the Boozar collectors and so on and so forth. So... Now, what I want to do here, though, is I want to, this is going to be very difficult to try to modify within Photoshop. So I'm going to square these off. So if I go ahead and select all of those and do a scale Y zero, that scales at zero. And I'm going to press P to pin those. And we're going to do the same thing down here. Select all of these. Scale Y zero and pin those. Now, the reason why I'm pinning them is so if I do a, another UV unwrap of this particular part of the mesh here, it's going to keep those square. So if I go ahead and do another U and I unwrap it, it'll try to unwrap them again, but it'll keep them all squared away. So I'm going to go ahead and do an Alt P real quick on that scale X zero and pin those. Oops, scale X zero, enter, pin those. So once again, oops, if I go ahead, control L and UV unwrap them again, it'll keep all of those right where they want to be. But I still want to go ahead and try to project from view. Oops. And move that once again up there. Up oh, by projecting it from you overrides the pin, so you got to keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and fix that again. Go ahead and do an all P to remove those. Scale Y zero, then P, and then do the same thing with. Actually, I think those are pretty good, so we'll keep those right there. And that's what we're going to go ahead and do. And I'm going to do that to the rest of this. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out and UV unwrap uh, this the front deflector dish here and the these little areas right here and we'll just kind of start off for there for tutorial purposes so I will be right back in a few minutes all right I've went ahead and finished doing what I was uh, planning on doing uh, I mean there's still going to be more that I want to do but I feel like this would be enough to to demonstrate you know for just kind of tutorial purposes so what I got is right up here is going to be the um, Oh, all right, and I am back. So I haven't quite got everything done, but I think I got enough to try to get you at least give you all the idea for tutorial purposes. So you know, right here I have the impulse engines, and right here is going to be the deflector dish, and right there is just one of the three on each side for these little um, additional engine components that are going to be glowing and rather than just model all three I figured they're all going to be about to look the same so I'll just model one and then I'll go back in and redo each and every single one of these to fit whatever I'm doing on the texture side of things so what I now have is I got this but now I need to go ahead and try to get this exported into a format to where I could start working in Photoshop. And all I got to do is just go to 
UVs, I'm sorry, not UVs, go to image and I want to do save as image or as you saw, you can go into F3. And here we have several different options. We can go into PNG, we can go into JPEG. I'm going to go ahead and keep it into PNG format. And so, I mean, but you can go ahead in whatever format you want to work in. You can do what have you, but I'm just going to keep it in PNG. A couple of other little things that you can do. I'm just going to keep those uh, as is for right now. And as you can see, I got it already in my uh, folder here. But I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. And we're going to call this Textures. And keep it as glowybits.png. And... We are saving as, oh wait, we already got textures. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we do. Let's go ahead and keep that as, okay, UV maps. There we go. Let's go ahead, create new directory, which is what I want to do. So we go okay. And we're going to save that as an image. And so what that did now is that it went ahead and it saved the UVs into a separate image. So now we can open up whatever program that you want to use to do the textures and, uh, and get to work. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out again right here and open it up into Photoshop and I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, I have to apologize. I'm coming back in again because... I've made a few mistakes, a few errors um, for for this, and uh, you know I apologize. My mind hasn't really quite been uh, focused right now, but I wanted to just come back in and kind of correct this. Uh, you do not go into image and save as image. You got to go into UV and export UV layout. That's exactly what you need to do because I was going in saving as images, and I was wondering why when I was going into Photoshop nothing was showing up and then it finally dawned on me you're supposed to go into export UV layout so once you do that you yeah so you just click on that you go in set your size be sure that you do all UV so it could be all UVs and the only option that you have well you got three options here but PNG is uh, one of the one of the better ones so make sure you select that PNG and then you go into wherever it is that you're wanting to save it at, which right here is going to be, we're going to save it as uh, glowybits.png and export UV layout. And then from that, it's going to export an image file with all of these set up just the way that you need to, to go ahead and modify them in Photoshop. So with that said, let's shoot over to Photoshop now. Okay, everyone, I have to apologize a little bit. If I want to make one mistake in a video, I might as well go ahead and make a couple of others. This one wasn't intentional. Uh, just real quick so I can get into what I'm doing here is that my, for some reason, the audio didn't record. So I tried toying around with it a little bit to try to see if I can get the audio to come back in, but I couldn't do it no matter what. So I'm going to go ahead and just try recording a little bit of a narration here. So I apologize. But yeah, what I'm doing here is that I went ahead and I took that image that with the UV map and I went ahead and put it into Photoshop and what I did is I went ahead and created an extra layer and I took the impulse inlet or the impulse engines and the deflector dish and I copied those and I mirrored them and lined them up to the original UV image and that kind of gave me you know the mirror image because if you know, once again, the model is still having the mirror modifier, so when you do a UV, you only get one side. But I want to go ahead and model the whole thing. What I just did here is I went ahead and created a, another layer, which is a background layer, and I went ahead and made it white so I could see the UV images a lot better. And here I went ahead and merged the mirror and the original UVs into one layer just to manage it a lot better. Now, for me, I'd like to go ahead and try to name the layers. So right now I'm kind of renaming the layers, background, UV, so on and so forth. So when I'm going through the layers, because, you know, in Photoshop, you have these little itty bitty icons to tell you what the layers are. So naming it's a good thing to do so you can see what it is. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to get started on the, U on the Impulse Engine. So I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I don't know what I'm talking about here. I can't remember, but uh, I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to eventually, uh, eventually 
create a brand new layer, which I think is what I'm doing right now. Yeah, I'm creating a brand new layer, and this is where I'm going to start off my first set of UVs. And I want to make sure, now make sure that you always have the layer that you want to work in selected. I've made that mistake so many times where even when I'm selecting the UV layer, I end up doing image modifications to UV layer. And it just... Yeah, it just make sure you just have that layer selected. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and choose the color that I want, the, the main color for the impulse engine. And I know I'm talking about right here is that there's two primary colors that you usually see on the uh, Federation vessels. You either see red or you see blue. Uh, primarily it is red, but I do know there's been a couple of, especially in some of the newer ships, that they go with kind of a blue. But ultimately, I went ahead and I decided to pick a red color. So I'm going to go ahead and find my color. And you should see here, I'm going to go ahead and select this rectangle selection tool. And I'm going to select... Um, or draw a box around where the impulse engine is. I'm not going to care too much of about overlap, but um, it, it'll still work even if there's a little bit of, not overlap, but bleed off. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And I think what I ultimately do, yes, yeah, I'll go ahead and I decide I'm going to put my base color in black, and you'll see why I do that here in a minute. So I'm going to go into the paint tool and I'm going to go ahead and after I guess making sure that I have that area selected, I'm going to go ahead and go to the paint tool, paint bucket tool, and I'm going to drop a bit of black into that rectangular tool. Because that rectangular tool is going to make sure that I only color just that area. So there we have it. So you can see as I remove it, we have the black, and that's the first part of our texture. And I know the texture that I'm drawing right now is not going to be the finished texture. It's just that kind of, kind of just started going through, you know, kind of just hitting the highlights, you know, for tutorial purposes on, you know, how I usually like to kind of try to do some of these textures. And I think now I'm now going to go ahead and go back into the red for the actual, you know, the impulse engines. You know, the impulse engines, I mean, um, you tend to have kind of like the grill, which is, you know, what you usually see is the red and the blue. You know, it's, it's you know, but behind that is a, is a, is an engine, is the actual impulse engine itself. And if you look at technical manuals, I mean, it almost looks like it's a, like a rocket exhaust. And with a ship this big, you know, you don't want it to have one big exhaust exhaust think of like the you know the star destroyers from star wars sorry to you know go into another type of realm here but you know the star destroyers have three big huge you know jets with a bunch of smaller jets around it. it's not just one big engine so i'm thinking here that i was going to go ahead and try um you know i debated between i definitely didn't want one so i was debating between two and I think ultimately what you'll see here is I set with five so what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and eventually I'm going to select the gradient tool yeah at first I make the mistake of doing the lens flare effect but no that's not what I wanted to do I want to make sure that I go to gradient And eventually I realized my mis what I'm trying to do here in just a minute. So yeah, and I'll go ahead and I create another layer. So rather than do something onto that layer, that black layer, I want to create another layer and do the gradient tool onto that first. And like usual, I go ahead and I'll go back and eventually and rename that layer. So... There I go. I finally figured it out what I wanted to do. So you go in under the gradient. It tends to be under the paint bucket tool. Make sure you select radial. And as you can see, there's a bit of a bleed off there. You can go in and you can modify, you know, about where exactly from the center, the epicenter of the bleed off goes off. I don't do that in this tutorial, but you can feel free to toy around with those settings. And so, once again, make sure that you have the layer, very important that you have the layer selected in there with the gradient tool, as you can see. So, that would be just that one engine. 
and I toying around, I'm kind of showing you about how if you can draw that line out from the epicenter, it makes it bigger, makes it smaller. If you keep it smaller, so I'm kind of toying around. You know, once again, that's just looking at it. I'm just toying around, but eventually I settle for for two engines. I think I went ahead and tried it with just one light, one solid light, just to see what it kind of looked like. But with the ship that big, it just it looked like it needed more. Uh, it needed more of them. So here it is. I think I'm trying out two right now, and it just didn't work out. So. So yeah, while I'm going through this, trying to figure this out, I think I also kind of take the time to talk of about, you know, kind of, you know, explaining of about reason why I had to apologize that this video took so long to do is because, you know, I'm actually down here in Texas and right about in my area of Texas, we recently got hit with some major uh, rainwaters. You know, we, it ended up flooding and it was, you know, luckily my house was kind of spared and that was actually kind of surprising considering about how the creek that is actually out behind my house over you know flooded over uh, we're apparently we're high enough to where we didn't receive any kind of damage so that's actually very you know uh, very good that 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 we managed to um, you know for us particularly I do know some people that had some major damage and I even know one person that um, knock on wood almost almost actually probably potentially die could have died through this so uh but you know it's but you know from the my job though is that i had to kind of do a lot of work to try to help try to restore some certain services and things so i've been extremely busy and and by the end of the day i've been extremely tired and so i haven't had time to really kind of work on the videos so okay as you see right here now i've decided to go ahead and go with just five engines so i'm or five separate impulse engines so I'm kind of going through and I'm trying to place them and once again this isn't going to be the final look of the texture this is just kind of just once again just tying the highlights um, I'm not going to get into into this episode actually it's going to be between this episode and the next episode you'll see what the finished textures will look like but for those that are using this for tutorial purposes you can get a kind of an idea of about how I tend to work in Photoshop to try to get some of these textures and and even if you don't have Photoshop, just a reminder, you can use GIMP. GIMP is a is GIMP is pretty good. You know, it's it's free, you can't beat that. And there's a couple of features that Photoshop has that GIMP doesn't have, but um, but for most of the stuff that I'm doing in this tutorial you can easily do in GIMP. But yeah, it's going back to the flood said I, I've just been extremely busy and I apologize for you know because I was planning on releasing a video last Thursday but um, you know I I've, I've, I've didn't get to finish I didn't even get to really start on filming anything because that's when all the rainwaters hit so um, you know, so, and by the time I started actually filming the videos, getting later and later and later, and actually the, this video took, you know, it was actually recorded across several days, so, and then I had been spending several days trying to figure out, well, why is it that it, this wasn't recording? All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm creating another layer, because what I decided to go ahead and try to do is to kind of give the texture a little bit more, well, you know, texture, is to kind of put some lines that are going to be in front of these five lights to kind of look like not necessarily like it's a glass but like there's you know there's something there it's like there's an actual grill or something there and right now I went with lines but I'm actually kind of now thinking about maybe doing like kind of a honeycomb honeycomb effect um, you know I think that that would probably look a little bit uh, more unique and uh, I know some people don't like the design of the JJ Enterprise, but the impulse engines on the back, I, I kind of like that little honeycomb effect that if you look at the impulse engines there, they kind of like. But right now what I'm doing is I'm drawing lines across it, and those are going to be in black, but then I'm going to go back and use that gradient tool again, as you'll see here, and, you know, make them look a little bit more like they're actually influenced by the... The radiation or the energy that's emitting from those 
you know, from those impulse engines. So I'm just trying to get all those lines all good, nice and straight. Okay, I'm getting towards the end of finishing this. And as you can see, as I'm drawing each one of those lines, each one of those lines is actually being treated as a pathway in Photoshop, which you can use to do some manipulation, but I prefer to do what's called rasterizing the layer, which turns it basically from a path into an actual image that you can manipulate. So I'm gonna, as you'll see, I'm gonna go ahead and select each one of those rasterized layers and, or each one of those paths or layers that it was generated and go ahead and rasterize them. And so once again, and, and then merge them all down. And that will leave that as one individual texture that, or not texture, but image in Photoshop that I can manipulate separate from the rest of the other three layers or the other layers. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I wish that there was probably a, a, a better, you know, just a simple line tool that you could just do that would just automatically, you know, just it recognize that, hey, this is a line that I'm wanting to do in Photoshop. So you don't have to go through that process of rasterizing it. But, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, the old fashioned paint. You know, you just take a line and draw a line, you know, and it's, and it's there and it's an actual, you know, uh, you know, series of bits, little color bits or what have you. So I just rasterized all the layers and I'm going to go ahead and select them all and merge all the selected layers. And like usual, I'm going to go ahead and rename that as I think I renamed it Impulse Grills, I believe. I can't really see it from here, but Impulse Grills. Once again, that way I can see when I'm looking at that layer because if you look at the layer boxes, you can't really see the image of what it is that that layer is supposed to be. So um, you know, good tip is just, you know, don't leave, don't get lazy and leave those layers as, you know, as is, you know, as layer one, layer two, layer three, go ahead and label those layers accordingly. So you can always go back and if you want to delete a layer or modify a layer or make a layer invisible or visible, you know, which one it is that you're actually manipulating. And so here I went, as you see, I'm going to go ahead and I, um, Actually, what I did is, yeah, now I put in another layer, and that layer I'm going back in, and I'm using that gradient tool to kind of do a little highlight again in the center of each one of those, um, each one of the impulse engines. And now I'm going to go through, and this is a part that I'm not too familiar with. I mean, I know what they kind of do, but I never really know which one will give me the effect that I want. So I just kind of just go through and I do either a screen or a lighten or a darken or what have you until I can find one that I like. So I'm going through and I'm trying to find one that's just going to just l lighten up only the, you know, only the, um, you know, it's not going to lighten the whole image or any other layer is only going to lighten up just those grill lines. You know, it's, it leaves everything else just as is, but it just kind of lightens up those grill lines to kind of give you an idea that, or the hint that the, that there's radiation that's coming off of that. You know, it's coming off of that that's actually manipulating that. And we'll get a little bit more into that when I start looking at the deflector grill, because, um, you know, listening to, uh, I think it's Andrew Prober who designed the Enterprise, you know, for the movies, the way he describes that deflector dish is that, you know, the, it, the color is not its natural color. It's, you know, it's like it's metallic like the rest of the ship, but that color is basically radiation emitting off of the deflector dish or the deflector screen. You know, that's how much radiation is. It's actually causing that metal to change color kind of like the you know the you know the metal on your like your like your stove when you turn it on that b normal black metal turns red as you know as it's starting to emit heat so i kind of see that same thing being with these impulse engines or especially with the grills is that they're turning red you know because they're emitting that much amount of energy so I'm going to go ahead and I know that I'm getting towards the end of this episode so I'm going to start kind of uh, saving it and so yeah so with that being said I just want to go ahead and yeah I'm going to go ahead and start again with the next episode this is going to be the end of this one so when we start the next episode we're going to start back up into Photoshop and we're going to be taking a and hopefully I'll have the 
image completely done but we'll go back in once again and kind of go in show you a little bit tips and tricks and stuff of about how I got certain things and why I'm deciding to do the textures that and then hopefully we should be going back into blender and we'll be showing you the different ways about how you can apply the texture and also how you can render these textures out so until then I just want to just go ahead and say that this is b-belt Dan and well we're not in Photoshop at the time but we will be back in blender and thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.